The new 1.3 characters Fushuan and Lynx are absolutely disrupting the Korean team building meta. And in this video, I'm going to talk about why these two right here have basically changed the way you can play the game. But more importantly, I'll also showcase the most popular teams you can build with Fushuan along with Lynx. And trust me, it's pretty wild what they can do. I think it's bizarre how broken Fushuan is compared to other preservation units. Like, literally, she's the best preservation unit right now. Because she offers tons of damage mitigation, can provide crowd control resistance, and even boosts the team's damage and HP pretty decently thanks to her skill. If that's not enough, she has emergency healing that can basically restore almost her whole health. And she can even heal her whole team when using her ultimate. I'm not sure what Hoyerverse were thinking here, because I can tell you at this moment, with a well-invested team, Fushuan just by herself can sustain her teammates in places like the Forgotten Hall. Although, it does depend on the comp, which I'll talk about in a moment. But basically, she's an extremely broken character at the current state of the game. Nobody else can offer this much tanking and damage mitigation, and it actually opens up to a lot of interesting synergies you can go for. But let's take a quick step back and talk about Lynx. Now, I would say these two are their own separate entities. I'll only really talk about them both later on when I showcase a mono quantum team. But for now, it seems like Lynx is kind of a big deal when it comes to keeping your team alive. Almost standing toe to toe with Luocha. She is the first one who has access to a mass AoE cleanse, she can increase max HP with her skill which also heals, and she can even increase aggro on a unit if it's destruction or preservation. Finally, there's also her ultimate which heals, and on top of that, there's continuous healing coming from her talent which lasts up to 3 turns. I mean, she packs a ton of healing. Sure, the fact that her AoE cleanse comes from the ultimate can be limiting, but this is Eidolon Zero Links we're talking about. At E2, she gains a pseudo cleanse for her skill, but I think the most important thing about her is that she works really well with destruction units thanks to her aggro boost she gives to them. However, the most important thing about Lynx is that she's a 4 star preservation unit. Not only does this mean you can have an easier time obtaining another healer besides Natasha, but she's also going into the standard pool, so with time, she will most likely show up from standard pools. All in all, these two units have brought a lot of positive change to the game, and they aren't even damage dealers. Well, you can go for some wacky Fushuan DPS builds, but still. For now, I want to talk about their team comps in this next segment. Segment. But first, thanks to Displate for sponsoring today's video. I just got myself a couple of sweet Genshin Displates, and as you can see, Ruben was very excited to help me unbox the goodies. Each Displate comes in that awesome plastic foil, along with some amazing magnets that makes it a breeze when mounting them on walls. It's magnetic. Seriously, there's just a couple of steps you need to follow, and you can mount your displates within minutes. I also got myself a huge horizontal displate, and it looks so good after getting it out of that plastic foil. I don't know about you, but the siblings never look better than now. And there's a ton of brands you can order from displate, ranging from video games to anime, so you're definitely going to find something that catches your eye. Like, I got this super cute spy family displate. Both of these displates are now chilling together with my cats in their favorite napping spots. And each displate is manufactured in Europe and will be delivered within 4-5 to five days and it's a great alternative compared to standard paper or canvas printing. So make sure to use my link in the description with my promo code shown here for some amazing deals because you can get up to 40% off by just using my link and promo code. So make sure to check out Displate and help support my channel. Okay, so let's talk about the first big team comp that elevates Jing Yuan's performance thanks to Fushuan. It's no secret that this guy's damage is heavily tied down to the Lightning Lord, and there's nothing worse than getting a crowd control effect applied to Jing Yuan, which will skip the Lightning Lord's turn. But this is where Fushuan comes in. A team made up of Jing, Ding Yun, Pela, and Fushuan pretty much solves this one big issue, and it's thanks to Fushuan's skill which allows her whole team once per skill's activation to resist the next crowd control effect. Not only that, she can boost critical rate by up to 12% idle on zero, which is a pretty big crit value buff, and something that can help Jing Yuan focus more on crit damage or attack stats instead. This team quite honestly feels refreshing to see, especially since there's no abundance unit in it. Now, in Swarm Disaster, you might have to swap out Pela with a healer, but in Forgotten Hall, Fushiban has no problem sustaining the team, especially if she has her signature light cone. The fact that Jing Yuan can enjoy both a massive attack boost from Ting Yun and a serious defense shred from Pela speaks volumes about his damage improvement. You could even swap out Ting Yun with Branya if you want that extra turn and damage increase for Jing Yusuanus. Another awesome team archetype that Fushuan enables are the 2 2 elemental comps. For example, Himiko with Asta in a team with Fushuan and Silverwolf is pretty cool, because it's not often I get to see Himiko in action. Or for that matter, Hook, who can also replace Himiko. Again, Fushuan can fully sustain the team while the wolf shreds the enemy's defense and applies fire weaknesses if needed. And on top of that, you have Asta boosting attack and speed, which is one of my favorite combos in this game. 
but I do want to talk about the synergy of using both Fushuan and Silverwolf. The double element team utilizing fire units is just one of many variations you can go for when using both Fushuan and Silverwolf, because these two can help you mold so many team comps, it's not even funny. Seriously, the whole double element archetype is just too powerful right now. Although, there is a 50-50 gamble when you need to apply one of the elemental weaknesses if the enemy doesn't have a quantum weakness, but it becomes so much more consistent when the enemy does have a quantum weakness. The fact that Fushuan can keep the team alive while tanking and boosting and healing, and then Silverwolf steps in with her debuffs and defense shred is just too much fun. And even though both are featured 5-star characters, I think the beautiful thing about Fushuan is that she can still function really well without Silverwolf, just like I showcased the team with Jingyuan before. Basically, Fushuan is extremely versatile by herself. And you could easily go for something like Imbibitor Lune, Tingyun, Pela, and Fushuan to just unleash a ton of damage. Or it could be any kind of variation that includes a damage dealer and Fushuan, leaving the other two spots filled with anything that you find good. Finally, there's also the triple quantum and plus one other element you can go for when building Fushuan comp. Again, Silverwolf could be really nice here because if the enemy doesn't have a quantum weakness, she can apply it, and then the three quantum units can demolish the toughness bar of the enemy. But you might be wondering, why not showcase a true mono quantum team? Well, that's where Lynx comes in, and so let's talk about it in this next part. So, Mono Quantum, the dream is finally real, right? Well, kind of. Currently, a skill point efficient Mono Quantum team is made up of Lynx, Fushuan, Zilla, and Silverwolf. And look, I'll be honest, this team is not the fastest in clearing stuff, but it is the most reliable and the most universal comp in the game right now. Because this is a true Mono Quantum team. There is no more gambling whether Silverwolf will apply the Quantum Weakness. If the enemy doesn't have Quantum Weakness, they will have it after Silverwolf uses her skill. And the amount of survivability this team has is insane. By picking destruction and sub-specializing in preservation, the whole final 5th level swarm disaster challenge becomes a joke, especially if you can pick up the spore upgrades from Propagation Path. And I think this is one of the comfiest teams to play right now that will have a really long-lasting value in the game's future. I mean, think about it. The whole shtick where you need to play around enemy weaknesses no longer matters when using Silverwolf in the true Mono Quantum comp. And even though this game is pretty casual, this team is able to fight anything thrown at it, at least for the moment. But I did say this team is still not that insane. Well, it has to do with the lack of harmony here, because while Silverwolf can shred the defense, there isn't really anyone who can boost the damage in a serious way. And as much as I love the crit boost from Fushuan, it's still not enough. On top of that, if it's not the final Swarm Disaster level, the survivability is a bit over the top. Fushuan or Lynx would just be enough. And I could replace one of them with QQ, but then there's a bit of a problem with managing skill points. So for now, this team utilizes two defensive units. Still, I think Lynx and Fushuan enable a really fun team comp that feels super unique right now. And the best part about it is that future Quantum characters, especially from Harmony, might make it better. So there's always something to look forward to. Now, finally, I want to quickly cover Blade and Clara when using Lynx. Because Lynx's skill can boost the aggro and destruction units, Blade will be able to trigger his follow-ups more often, while at the same time, the max HP boost is a welcome addition to further increase his damage. There is, however, one thing to keep in mind, and that is, if Blade is paired with Brania, because she will consume a lot of skill points and make Blade take more turns, this means the aggro boost will expire sooner and require Lynx to reapply it. So in that case, you might need to skip Lynx's skill once in a while. But my favorite team so far is made up of Clara, Lynx, and two other units. We're going back to the basics here, because Lynx, similar to March 7th, puts more aggro with her skill on Clara, and then Clara spams her counterattacks on any enemy that dares to go at her. The awesome thing about this team is that if Clara is slow, the aggro buff lingers for so much longer than with someone like Blade and Brania Synergy. And you can even do some nifty things like putting Yukong into the team. Since her buff won't expire when Clara simply makes a counterattack, there are of course a couple of things to keep in mind. First one would be that Lynx does need to take her turn before the enemies, so that she can buff Clara, which then allows Clara to have a higher likelihood to tank the enemies. And then you can also place Lynx next to Clara, so that if there's a splash attack, Lynx can gain some energy. But yeah, overall, I think both Fushuan and Lynx have brought a ton of change into the game. I mean, it's not that surprising since support units always feel more impactful than straight up damage dealers, but I really couldn't predict this much utility that they would bring. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful, and if you're looking for a way to spice up your rooms with some cool Genshin and Star Rail artwork, this place is a really cool place to order from, and you'll also help support my channel. But regardless, thanks for watching, and see you next time.